I've got $37,000. I want to make 10% return. I want access to my money whenever I want. And oh, by the way, I want absolutely zero risk. What did you say? Now you might actually think that that is a joke, but that was a real life question that somebody asked me that wanted to invest their money and to find something that offered them low risk and high return. Now, obviously that investment does not exist. That is a unicorn, but there are low risk, high yield investment options out there. And we're gonna find out what the top seven are right now. <music> What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff Rose, Certified Financial Planner. This is the Wealth Hacker channel. We're showing you a different way to build wealth that wasn't taught to you in schools or by your parents. And today we're talking about low risk, low, low risk, high return, what sort of investment options are available to you. Now, before we start talking about low risk investment options, first we have to understand what exactly is risk. Now, I don't know if you've ever taken the time to fill out one of these investor questionnaires that ask you, how risky are you on a scale of one to 10? That typically doesn't work. Since I was a financial planner for over 16 years, I understand that that doesn't work. Now, one of the simplest ways I was able to determine how risky an investor really was, was to help them quantify how risky they were. As an example, let's say that you've got a $100,000 portfolio. Would you be comfortable losing 10% of that portfolio, say within a 90 day time frame? And I'd ask this to different clients and typically I would get, oh yes, I'm totally comfortable with that. Or I would get, no way, I am not comfortable losing 10%. Now that was very helpful information, but for those that said, oh yeah, I am totally comfortable with 10% loss, I would then press just a little bit more to help me and also help them understand what that truly means. So if you had a $100,000 portfolio, you lose 10%, which comes to $10,000, that means you've got $90,000 left over. But once again, you lost $10,000. Hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, are you okay losing $10,000, one tenth of your portfolio in the next three months? And that was how I was able to help them see what that truly means. So exactly what I'm trying to do here is help you quantify how risky you really are. Many people that say they're comfortable losing 10%, 20%, 30%, when they start seeing you having a million dollar portfolio, losing 30% to where you lose $300,000 in less than a year, a lot of people just aren't comfortable with that. But that is a whole lot more helpful than filling out a questionnaire that says, are you risky from one to 10? All right, let's go ahead and dive into the wealth board so we can start seeing what are the seven different low risk, high return options. So number one is high yield savings. Now for a very, very long time, high yield savings was almost laughable because I mean, there it was almost a decade where you were getting less than 1% on your money. I mean, it literally was laughable. Now we're seeing where you can actually get four to 5% on high yield savings that also could be money market accounts, I mean, it, it's, it's fun to see that these options are available, but it's funny. Like don't just because interest rates have gone up, don't automatically assume that your bank has increased their rates. So just to kind of give an example here is looking at the FDIC's website right now. And you can see where right now it says the national uh, national deposit rate is 0.39%, 0.39%. And that's not really that exciting, right? But if you, and just to give you an example, so here is actually my bank. Uh, and this is, I, I still get a chuckle out of this. <laughs> Maybe it's just like I'm in denial here, but any balance APY 0.01%. Let me make that bigger just so you can see it. 0.01%. And mind you, that's not 1%, that's 0.01%. Um, so you're like, okay, so Jeff, if the FDIC says the national saving rates are 0.39 and your bank is, point, is paying 0 0.01, 
well, what else is out there? Well, I just went up to bank rate just to see, you know, what else, what options are there for savings accounts right now? So just to give an example, as I mentioned, we got PNC Bank paying 4.3. Uh, We've got Marcus, which was, it's been a very popular savings account for quite some time. It's paying 3.9. Lending Club, which used to be peer to peer lending, now they are into, now they're a neo bank into online banking. 4.25%. Synchrony, 4.15. So, as you can see, those are what we're talking about when we're looking at that 4 to 5%. There are choices out there for you. It, the key here is like, obviously, you want to be careful in like just opening up a different bank, a lot of different bank accounts to where like you got money here, you got money there, just because you're trying to maximize like how much you're saving. I will say, speaking from personal experience, when I continue to see my bank paying what they're paying, like paying what they're paying or what they are not paying, I am looking at transferring a bulk of our savings to another quality bank, FDIC insured that's paying more. Uh, but I don't wanna like spread my money. I used to have clients that would have Bank, like CDs and savings accounts at like 10 to 15 different banks. It is a bookkeeping nightmare. Like don't go chasing rates. Like just make sure that whatever you, whatever you do, just maximize what you have. All right, so that's number one. Let's look at number two. Staying with the banking theme here, bank CDs. Now, once again, CDs are something that I, I don't think I would have added this to the list. I actually did a similar video to this a couple of years ago you know, CDs were not on here because it just wasn't worth it. If savings accounts, money market rate accounts are higher now, you're going to see the same thing with bank CDs. Now it can be difficult to try to find all the different rates. So one option that I have found to just being a very simple option for a lot of people is Save Better. So Save Better is a, an online platform that basically is a broker to different bank and different banking products. So they have savings accounts, they have money market accounts, bank CDs, which we're gonna address here in a second, and other banking products. But just to look at the current top bank CDs, this is the this is currently on Save Better's website, their high yield CDs. We've got Sally Mae Bank. It is a 27 month CD paying you 5.15%. Axiom Bank, also paying 5.15%. First Mid and uh, First Mid Bank and Trust paying 5%. That's a nine month. Should have mentioned that the axiom is a six month. So you can do a little search here, looking for rates, looking for terms. And once again, when you're looking at a Salami, Salami Bank paying you 5%, that might be worth it. There are other banks too. I don't see them listed on here that sometimes they'll have what's called a no penalty CD no penalty CD. And basically what that is, for those that are familiar with CDs or certificates of deposit, if you put your money in, and then if you needed your money, needed to cash it out sooner than later, you would basically forego most of your interest. Sometimes it's all your interest. Sometimes it's prorated. You got to read the terms, the fine print to, to know what that is. So if you took out a two-year CD and you need your money sooner, you, know, you might have to give up all your interest or give a prorated pr portion of your interest. With a no penalty CD, in that case where you can pull your money out and not have to pay a penalty, like that is a big deal. So sometimes if you ever see that in the marketing language, no penalty, that's what that means. So that is number two. And I'll have a link to Save Better, their CD rates, also their saving account rates in the description if you wanna check them out. Uh, they've been a very, plat a very cool platform for a lot of people right now. So that is number two. Moving on to number three, we've got short term bonds. Now with short term bonds, look there, there we go. My tablet's catching up, short term bonds. Now, typically I know there are some people when they think of bonds, they think of like the old school, like savings bonds, like Siri EE bonds. There are short term corporate bonds, short term government bonds. Not as common nowadays, do you see people buying individual bonds. When I first started in the financial service industry many, many moons ago, it was more common for investors to buy individual bonds, whether they be three-year bonds, five-year bonds, 10-year, 15, 20, 25, you're looking at muni bonds. That was fairly common and some people still do, but what is more common nowadays is looking at ETFs. 
And here is one example of a short-term treasury bond ETF. This is iShares. The symbol of this is SHV. And you can buy this like you would a stock and it's going to pay you out a yield. It also can give you out a return. But as you can see in the short term, I mean, it's this is what you would expect, 2.23% is what it has yield. It's not super sexy. And once again, we're talking about a short term treasury bond. Interest rates have just started to increase. Treasury bonds mature have a maturity of less than one year. So we wouldn't expect this to be higher than a CD. But once again, if you're looking for something a little bit on the safer side, you don't want to buy individual bonds. You can go out and buy an iShares ETF. You could buy this at any brokerage, whether it be a brick and mortar or an online or some sort of investment app like this would be available to you. Moving on to number four is series I bonds. Now, these, these were all the rage earlier this year, later part of last year, when we saw Series I bonds paying greater than 9%. It was almost 10% return. Now, when you wrap your head around the fact that you can get a government-backed bond, a government-backed bond that was paying almost 10% return, I mean, it, that just is insane. Like literally like almost zero risk. Now, interest rates have come down a bit on Series I bonds. You can actually see what the current rate is on their website at treasurydirect.gov. And right now, Series I bonds are paying 6.89%. Uh, so that was what the current rate is. Now, this goes from... November 1st, 2022 to April 30th. So the time of this recording, we are four days into the treasury getting ready to reset the bonds for the next six months. Now, here is an article on CNBC talking about what's getting ready to happen, but many people are expecting I-bond rates to fall. So that fun 10% return that we were getting for a short term, almost 7% is getting ready to go away based on where things are expected to go. Even still, even still, you know, if you're getting 4%, you know, on the short term, it's not that bad. Obviously, you start really then asking yourself, okay, if I'm, do I wanna make 4% on an I bond? You know, like 4% down here, when I could get that four to 5% here, or even with the savings accounts. You know, if savings accounts are paying, more than than what an i bond is like i think that's probably the route that i would go so, but series i bonds are still an attractive option if that's something that you are looking at so moving on to number five now we are crossing over into the space that is going to be a little bit more on the risk side and with that we are looking at dividend paying stocks now Want to be careful with dividend paying stocks because sometimes we hear dividend paying stocks then people start chasing dividends they start looking for dividend paying stocks they're paying like six percent seven percent sometimes they'll even pay over 10 11 12 percent typically when we're looking at those types of stocks we're looking at master limited partnerships which are required to pay out a high dividend because of how they are cl classified for tax and business purposes. But typically with MLPs, not always, but typically MLPs are going to give you a lot more risk. Um, another thing that could happen is with chasing dividend stocks is looking at preferred stock. And with preferred stock, you'll you typically see a higher dividend, but typically with preferred stock, they they operate a lot like bonds. So it's a hybrid between a stock and a bond. So if we start seeing fluctuation in interest rates, which we are in a interest rate fluctuating type period right now, you could see a decrease or increase on your principal. So maybe you're getting 7% of a dividend on your preferred stock, but if you put 10 grand in and now interest rates have gone up and your principal has gone down, it's like, oh, I'm getting 7% on my money, except that I just lost 30% of my principal. Like, that's not fun. 
So when I think about if you're looking for dividend paying stocks, what I typically suggest is looking at what is called, and there's, there's a few different ones you can look at. I always mention the dividend aristocrats. Why the dividend aristocrats? Because they are all stocks that are in the S and P 500. And they also, and this is the big, the, the, the main reason they have increased their dividend every year for at least 25 years. Currently there are 66 stocks that are in the dividend aristocrats that you can choose from. And some will pay you less than 1% on their dividend. Some will pay you, I think as high as four or 5%, maybe even higher than that. Now, does that mean that there's zero risk? Obviously we've just crossed over from buying FDIC banking products to now we're investing in the stock market. So there is a level of risk that is higher, you know, scale one to 10, it's probably above a five <laughs> with the dividend aristocrats, but it's still a, I think is a more of a safer option than going out and trying to buy growth stocks or tech stocks or MLPs or preferred stocks. And just to give you an example of a dividend aristocrat, they list a few here. You've got 3M, you've got Walgreens, IBM, Realty Income Core, Franklin Resources, Essex Property Trust, Federal Realty Investment Trust, and dividend yields anywhere from 5.74%, it's the highest year, down to 4.3, pulling and a real example up here is IBM currently. So right now IBM is currently at $126.50. And with this dividend yield currently is at 5.25%. So for those that don't know this, like one of the, the, the ways that you make money in the stock market is not just the dividend, but you also have ca capital return. And you add those together and that gets you the total return. So when we think about total return, dividends, obviously that's dividends is that nice cash check that you get every quarter. That is the company saying, thank you for being a shareholder in our company. We want to give you some value. So we're going to give you a small dividend check every quarter as an appreciation for being an investor, for being a shareholder. That's one way that you make on make money on your money. The second piece is capital return. So basically, you invest into the stock, you buy IBM stock at 100, it's up to 25. Well, now you just gain $25 per share and you're getting the dividend. Like that is total return. Like that's how you make money in the stock market. So dividend paying stocks, looking at dividend aristocrats, the other one that uh, is also similar, a little bit different criteria, that is the dividend kings. And the dividend kings here, like I think there's, they, they've they increased their dividends over 50 years. So that's the difference. To me, dividend kings, dividend aristocrats, you're focusing on dividend paying stocks that have a consistent track record of not only paying their dividend, but also increasing their dividend. That's why it made the list at number five. Moving on to number six, boom, boom, boom. Annuities, annuities. Why am I making funny noises here? Annuities. Come on, Wealth Board, catch up. <laughs> catch up, Wealth Board, there you go. Annuities. Oh, so once again, being a financial planner for 16 years, I've seen, if I had to choose one investment, one investment that was the most missold, misrepresented investment out of everything, it was the annuity. Now annuity can mean a lot of different things because within the annuity and annuity realm, you've got fixed annuities, you've got deferred annuities, you've got variable annuities, you've got fixed index annuities, and there's probably 17 others I can't think of at the moment, but there are different type of annuity products that you can purchase. Now they do offer low risk because annuities do have a guarantee. Uh, they don't have FDIC insurance guarantee. No, no, no FDIC insurance guarantee. What they have is a guarantee that's backed by the insurance 
company. So every single annuity product is issued by an insurance company. I'm just going to name one on the top of my head. Let's say that you buy a nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? If you buy a nationwide annuity, it is backed by nationwide, the insurance company. And how safe that annuity is, is basically how safe is nationwide as an overall insurance company. And all these insurance companies, they get in, they get a rating by AM Best is one, uh, Moody's is another, S&P also has a rating system. And typically what these rating agencies do, they give them a report card like rating to give you an idea how safe it is. So what are annuities paying right now? So for the purpose of this video, we're going to look at fixed annuities. And I went to annuity.org to see. So to give you an idea, here are some annuity rates. Two year, four and a half percent, three year, 5.65, five year, 5.4. So, all right, looking pretty good. 10 year, 5.45. As you can see, it doesn't really make sense to lock up your money any longer than three years, unless you just are worried that interest rates are gonna go down and you just wanna lock in that period. Like that would be the only reason why you go any longer than three years here. So that is the annuity rates. Let's look at some different type products. So here in the example, let's actually look at the three year rate, right? So we've got this Secure Savings Elite 3 versus a Harborview 3 high brand. And just once again, I was I was a, an advisor for 16 years. I know I've said that a few times. I've never heard of any of these. <laughs> like I haven't heard of any of these. That's okay. Um, one is paying you 5.65%. Um, the other one is paying you 4.8%. So you're like, well, of course, I want the four or the 5.65, maybe. But this is where we start looking at the AM best rating. One has a B plus, the other has an A minus. Now those are really, really, really close. And technically speaking, if you are B plus or above, you are considered investment grade, meaning that like, okay, you're you're okay. Anything lower than B plus is, is where you want to stay away from. But that's where I would almost say, okay, if you want to stay away from anything below B plus, and you got somebody that's just just on that that thin line of crossing over, and you've never heard of the company, I don't know if it's worth chasing an extra 0.85% for the sake of potentially losing your money. So that's just one thing to consider. Now, the other thing with annuities that you have to remember, and this is the big, big, big difference, is that if, I need to go down here, with annuities, unlike a bank or a bank CD, you, you would pay a penalty if you were to cash your money out sooner than later. So we talked about like with bank CDs, if you cash your money out, you lose your interest, like that's a big deal, but not, not as a big deal with an annuity. If you put $100,000 in and it's paying you 5%, well, if you were to cash your money out, say at year two, not only would you give up the interest, but you may have to pay anywhere from, I don't know the exact numbers here, but like a five to 9% penalty and not on your interest on your principal. Like that is a much bigger deal. So yes, you put a hundred grand in, you're like, oh, I'm making 5%, great. Year two, crap, I need to pull some of this money out. You might have to pay a five to 9% penalty on your principal. So five grand out of the hundred grand you put in, like you're giving up the interest and some of your principal. So that is a huge difference with the annuities. And that's why, as I mentioned earlier, disclaimer, just be careful. Be careful that you understand what you are getting, understand what it takes to get your money out if you need it. And if there are any penalties, how it works. Okay. We good? We good. All right. All right. Moving on to number seven. Number seven, looking at real estate. Now here, once again, a few different options. 
for many trying to buy a rental property, trying to buy a flip type property, trying to get into the rental game, that is high risk for a lot of people. Low risk options. You can buy real estate investment trusts in the form of ETFs, in the form of stocks. Like these are all choices that you can do. Now for me, like one of the options that I've just loved because it's simple, it's easy, and that's just, and it's returned, it's made me decent money over the years, is Fundrise. Uh, Fundrise is a crowdfunding investment platform that allows you to basically pool your money with other real estate investors. And then Fundrise is in charge of purchasing whatever types of properties that is in their portfolio. And they're buying homes, they're buying single family homes, condominiums, complexes, I mean, all across the board. And if you look at the returns, they're actually really good, especially, I mean, this is the year, you know, we had an off year last year in the, the, the stock market, also in real estate. So with Fundrise, like they only made one and a half percent in 2022. Now I say only, only, but then if you looked at the public REIT sector was down negative 25%, the S&P 500 was down negative 18%. So that's one of the, what one of the rules of making money investing is you, you, you don't lose money when everybody else does, right? Or make money when everybody else is losing. So it's like, oh, you only made one and a half percent. Like, oh, well, yeah, I could have lost 25. So really I made about 26 and a half percent. But 2021, 20, almost 23 percent, seven, nine, eight. And I've had my Fundrise account now for, gosh, how long has it been? Uh, since 2018, maybe at the beginning. Let's look here. Yeah, since February 2018 is when I opened my account. And you can see my returns here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can read it. So my total net return is 11.3%. And I, that's key, right? Net return. That's not gross return, meaning that Fundrise paid me 11%, but then they took out all their fees, all the expenses. No, like that's the net return. So that's how much I have made after they've done everything that they've done. And as of, as of right now, there hasn't been a lot of risk. Is there risk? There's always risk with this. There's always potential risk. That's why we're listing this as one of the last options here on the wealth board. But with real estate, Fundrise is another option to consider. And if you can't tell here with all the scribbles, but I also have a li little asterisk here. And the reason I have the asterisk is because one of the ways that you can invest with low risk, high return is investing into yourself. And I'll probably say this almost in every single video because investing yourself is one of the easiest ways to get high return with very, very low risk. Like you are the single best investment that you can put money into with the largest R ROI. That's investing into your education, into your experience. How can you better yourself? How can you make yourself a better person? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever that looks like for you, find ways to invest in yourself. I don't wanna spend too much time on this because I have tons of other videos that you can check out on the channel where I talk about how to invest yourself and get the maximum ROI. But you are your best investment. That's why it made the list. That's the bonus one for the wealth board for your low risk, high return investments. Arch, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll have all the resources in the comments for you. If you wanna check out anything that I've mentioned here, uh, Fundrise, Safe Better, some of the dividend aristocrats, uh, some of the short-term bonds, Series I bonds, all that will be found in the description for you for your easy access so that you can take action on any of these options that seem like a best fit for you. All right, y'all, until next time, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.